Howdy folks, this is Jay from Colony Hills Homestead coming to you again on a beautiful evening. I uh, hope you all are having a great start to your week. It is about four o'clock here in East Texas. We've had sun for the last two days, about 60 degrees. So great time to get out and work and get some chores done. Chores got to be done every day, but it's a lot more pleasant to do it in this temperature and and we're just really enjoying it here um, for those who have yet to uh, come across the channel we are a do-it-yourself type channel uh, we want to show how to do projects cheap easy quickly uh, on your farm and your homestead we will do uh, product reviews we do specialize in quail here on the farm so we'll be talking quail anything from um, breeding hatching eggs chicks incubation um, composting composting is going to be what we talk about today our first video uh, concerned cages because if you're thinking about quail that was one of the first things you need to think about where you keeping them how you keeping them um, so this unfortunately is something you got to think about as well uh, when you're taking care of quail you're going to have to deal with quail poop so uh, composting here is just another part of every day. So composting is um, a chemical process that you can create without doing a bunch of store-bought materials and, uh, and all this. Now they do make the bins that turn and they make the uh, various compost bins, 45 gallon, 55 gallon, I think I've seen 65 gallons right so um we need something bigger here on the farm because we have lots of quail so with composting we want to talk uh, a little bit about browns greens the chemistry of it we're not going to get too deep in the numbers um, they do suggest that you have a three to one carbon and nitrogen ratio um, i can tell you from from doing compost myself that if you can get close to that you know if you if you can get 50-50 carbon and nitrogen, your, your compost is gonna turn out. Is it gonna take two or three more weeks? Probably. Um, what happens when you get the right um, ratio, which is three to one, uh, carbon and nitrogen, uh, nitrogen being your greens, quail poop in this instance, uh, carbon being the browns, oak leaves for us, as you can see, we have plenty of those. Um, whether it's just like they are or shredded. We have sawdust here on the farm. We have um, wood flakes, straw, hay. So those are other things that'll compost, newspaper, cardboard. Um, we'll get into that. But it's gonna create a, a chem chemical process, excuse me, that is gonna heat up. So, you know, you've probably heard from a grandmother or grandfather or father or mother them talk about that steamy pile of compost. Oh, it's still steaming when I got it or when they brought it to the house. There's some truth to that because it does truly heat up. Um, that is part of the process. I have one, two, three bins up there close to the road that we're gonna go see just in a, here in a moment that I registered the temperatures yesterday and they were between 125 and 135. So, and that's in December, the winter. So it's cooking, if that's, that's what you want to say, and that's what you want. So there's three things that your compost needs. Obviously, the right ratio and layering, okay? You're going to need somewhere to put it, no matter what bin you choose or, or area that you choose, which can simply be a pile. Um, you got to deal with the rain if it's simply a pile, but it can be covered with... Uh, with a, with a tarp or something of that nature. But it needs air, aeration. It has to have air. It has to have sunlight and it has to have water. Water being probably the most important that I've found um, through um, learning things the hard way with composting in the years past. Um, you gotta put enough water on it or it's just setting. It's not doing anything, it's just dry. So, you're gonna to have to make sure that you, you give it plenty of water. Um, so, 
I got wrote a few notes down here. I normally don't do notes. Um, so we're going to talk about compost tea. And I'm going to show you that uh, when we walk up to the barn here in a moment. Uh, and we're going to talk about a product that we use. But it is a fact, if you're dealing with quail, you're going to have to deal with quail poop. And quail poop compost is, is a very valuable item for your farm. Um, we put it in our gardens. We use it in our flower beds, gardens, bushes, shrubs, planting that we do here on the farm. Um, we give it away. We've sold it. We've traded it. Um, you know, I've had people stop by at the front of the property and just ask, what are those things? What are, what are those round things at, up there along the front of your property? That's my compost bins, which we're fixing to go look at and see. Um, so we're going to go up there. We're going to look at that. I'm going to take y'all with me. Let's go. So as I told you, we're going to come up here to the quail barn. Uh, it's up here at the front of the property, so I apologize in advance as I've done in other videos for any traffic noise. We are on a big highway here. Um, so I do have a wheelbarrow here with some... I'll wait till they pass. With some quail droppings and and other things now it's gonna it's gonna have wood chips in it it's gonna have other things um so compost tea what i mentioned earlier here's a quick way to use your hot fertilizer so you don't have to wait on your compost bins so you get a shovel full not a heaping shovel full put it in a bucket of water okay you give it a stir Now, in, in order to know the right ratio, there's one real simple method that you can look at. Let me see here. Makes your tongue tingled and you know it's about right. No, don't do that. <laughs> so, I stir this. I let it set overnight or about 24 hours. I will come and I will get the, the liquid, the water off the top and bring it, put it on my plants, bushes, shrubs, house plants, succulents. We have a greenhouse in the back um, that we'll show on another video. Uh, great, great fertilize, but it's a way to use it quick. You're diluting it, okay? It is hot. You can burn your plants up if you put this straight on them. So. I'm going to take the uh, camera off tripod. I'm going to walk over and we're going to show you my uh, geo bins that we talked about. And then we'll be done. All right, guys. This is the first geo bin I purchased. It is about ready uh, to be harvested, to be used. As you can see, those are the holes all the way around to give the aeration. Okay. You. Make it to whatever diameter that you would like. Uh, keep mine at about three, three and a half feet around. It will go, I think, to four foot in diameter. Let's walk on down the line here. This is the front end of the property again. That's where my quail barn is. I'll show you a picture of that before we cut out. This has some room for us to do a little more work in it. Okay, here's one that is basically ready to be harvested. So, I want to show you something that I do. As you can see there, we have three rebar stakes that you can buy, you know, at any of your hardware stores. I use those to support the sides, even though this thing is secure enough and sturdy enough to support that. That's just me. You don't, you don't have to do that. I do nail them down inside to, to give it some support. That's just in case I have it, you know, sitting at a, a foot or two foot 
and the majority of its leaves i don't want it blowing off in a storm or something like that so so i i leave it that way so when you get ready to turn if you need to turn and you don't have three to one you can take those three stakes out and move them right over to the side lift your geo bin off of your compost it will stay in a cylinder shape you get a pitch fork pitch forks actually best or shovel put all the stuff in your new um, placement for your geo bin and you have turned and aerated it and you know go a couple more weeks if you need to to get your finished product i'll talk about the finished product in another video and show you how i deal with that um, I do have a sifting method and and all that. So um, when when you get it in your hands and when you're when you're done, it's it's no longer poop, guys. It's it's black gold. It is the richest, you know, God's most natural fertilizer is. And you know, I I went to uh, where'd I go? Tractor Supply, not that long ago. They're selling chicken. Let's call it droppings, chicken poop, that has been dried out in little tiny bags. They're like a gallon, nine bucks. Okay. Let me tell you again about the size of these. So I can so I can really give you what's happening. This is 216 gallon capacity. 20 cubic feet. Go try to buy that much compost at your big box store and see what you spend. I've done it. I know what I've spent. You would be surprised at how much money not only this saves, but as I said in the beginning of the video, you know, there's other homesteaders, there's other farmers that could use it, trade it, sell it, use it yourself. It is, uh, I've never used a better fertilizer. Never have I had a better fertilizer. So, quail barn. This is our quail barn. Put that exhaust fan in. We have the roll-up doors in the front in case we have big orders. We have concrete pad out front. Thinking about possibly closing that in. Using that for an office and an incubation area. Door on the back side. Lots of room. I used to have them there. Lots of room uh, that we can grow, and we're looking forward to doing just that. So we thank y'all for viewing the channel. Again, subscribe, like, share, and we'll bring our next video to you within the next 48 hours gonna try to put out uh minimally three videos a week so thank you for watching so i've went and showed you all the compost bins that i use the geo bin um i found these online here's one this is how it's going to arrive to your home um as i've already told you three foot tall there you go it's not heavy at all even though it's very, very um, high-grade material, it's, it's very well built. Uh, I'm going to show it to you here, so if you give me an opportunity. Just a minute, I'm going to open it up. Which, this cardboard, as I said before, is able to be composted as well. This is not a sponsored ad. I have no sponsored ads. Um just trying to help folks make good decisions on things that they purchase for their homestead, for their farm, their ranch. Um, you know, I wish I'd have had some of the knowledge I'd have had uh, that I have now, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Um, I just spent the money to find out some things the hard way. Uh, there are things better that you have to spend more money for, and there are things cheaper that are just as good as but hopefully this channel will help somebody with that
So here's how it comes packaged. What I do is when I get these, when I get ready to use them, you can see how well wrapped it is. Man, it, this is sturdy. Sturdy material. I just want y'all to know. So when I get ready to use these, which I'm, I'm going to bring it up to the barn and lay it out in the morning, I will go ahead. These have been tightly wrapped for I don't know how long in ship, you know, in shipment status. So I'm going to lay this out, let it relax. It seems to help if you let it relax for, you know, at least half a day. Um, so that when you go to put it in the diameter that you want, whatever that is, um, it's, it's easier to work with. So you can see about how tall it stands. Um, you can see all the aeration holes. I want you to see that up close. That's all the way around. And this is heavy duty material, guys. This, this is gonna last years. This is not, this is UV protected material. So, um, hope y'all can, can take this tip and, and I'm going to leave a link in the description below, uh, to check this geo bin out. Um, and you know, if you, if you're going into quail, you're definitely going to need to think about compost or where you're going to put that. So, um, you need to you need to look into some different bins and and personally for me I don't feel like going out and churning and turning you know something that that'll hold uh, won't even hold 20% of what these will hold um, so thank y'all thank y'all for tuning in to the channel um, again as I as I said uh, please please subscribe like share the channel hit that bell notification those subscriptions are what keep us going uh, to where we can keep bringing these videos to you um, so that that's that's very important to us so we want to wish all of y'all a great day a great start of the week and god bless thanks